All right, so how wrong are we? Um, usually, I mean, we can't explain all the variation in an independent variable uh, with our explanatory variable, right? There's randomness going on. So we, we don't expect to be able to explain the whole thing. Um, our assumption is that the difference between our observed value, y, uh, and, our, uh, and the value we'd expect to see, y hat, that this diff is going to be normally distributed and the mean is going to be zero. There's going to be a variance of sigma squared, which, which can change. Um, but we're going to assume that it has comments. It's normally distributed at center around zero. We'll talk more about those uh, differences or uh, those assumptions in a little bit. But one thing we can do is we can measure uh, how far off are we. Okay, what we're going to do is create something called the residual the error term. Oops, pardon me. The residual, which is different than the error, really. The residual is what we what we uh, are assuming is the error. The residual is going to be defined as EI equals YI minus Y hat I. So that's the residual for, uh, for observation I, which is going to be equal to YI minus A minus BXI. Right? So this right here is our estimate, and this is our observed value. And we can figure out uh, for each observation what our residual is. Um, so let's take a look at what our residual is in, uh, in the example that we just looked at. So this was the table we created. Uh, we found our A and our B. Um, so we estimated this equation, right? So this was our estimate of A. Uh, this was our estimate of B. Um, we can use those to come up with our residual. What we do now is we'll create a Y hat column, which is our predicted value of Y. And if you recall, our estimated regression equation is that Y hat is equal to A plus B times XI, which is our percent options observation. Now A and B are going to be fixed, so I'm going to press F4 when I'm hovering over these to turn these into absolute uh, references so that they don't change when I copy and paste this. But you can see that our, uh, our estimated, this is our predicted sales, change in sales. called y hat. I don't know how to do hat in, in Excel actually, so I'll just call it y dash hat. Um, but it's going to be a plus b times x. So we can copy and paste this. Uh, this shows us a lot of digits. So let's bring it down to three just for the sake of con uh, keeping things legible. And you can see that these are different from these, right? Our predicted change is different from our observed change, and that's what we're interested in. Our residual, EI, is going to be equal to YI minus Y uh, hat I. Oops, not. There we go. And these are our residuals. So let's take this difference, 29 minus 30.814, it's so negative 1.814, copy and paste this all the way down. Now if you take the sum of these, you're going to see that this is zero, it always adds up to zero, and that's not that's not a coincidence. The way we built our estimators make sure that it works out like this. Um, but these values of the residuals, come, they'll come in handy for telling us how, uh, how useful our explanatory variable is in explaining uh, our dependent variable, and that's what we're going to look at next. So we've calculated residuals. How do we talk about the strength of this relationship? Well, the way we usually do it is we try to answer a question, uh, which is this. How much of the variation in y, right? So why, ultimately, our question is why isn't y the same for everything? Why don't we, why doesn't every company just have the same percent change in sales? So how much of the variation in y is explained by x, right, by our regression? And how much is just random? Um, 
remember, when we say just random, what we really mean is just outside our model, right? Our model's not capturing that. Um, and so we're going to try to figure out how much of this is, you know, comes from our regression. Okay, well, the first thing to think is, well, how much variation is there in Y? Well, if there was no variation in Y, then all of our observations for Y would be just the same, right? So that, you know, it would just be perfectly identical. Uh, it doesn't matter what the value of y is, but they're all at y bar. So let's say y bar is 100, then all no vari no variation would mean that all the y's are equal to 100, or y equals negative 100, or y equals 0, or y equals 6. Right? If that's just true all the time, that's no variation. In practice, though, we have some deviation, right? Um, even if some of them was at neg one was at negative 100, one was at positive 100, the average would be zero. Uh, but there clearly is deviation there in that case. So step one of figuring out how powerful our relationship is is how much is how much variation is there that we have to explain. We're going to try to explain the variation. Well, how much variation is there? The way we usually define this variation is using the total sum of squares, which for reasons that are not totally apparent, transparent, we usually abbreviate as SST, sum of squares total. And SST is going to be defined as the sum across all our observations, so from i equals 1 to n, of yi minus y bar the quantity squared. Right? So it's a squared deviation from the mean. And uh, for the data we've been looking at, this is what it looks like. Let's see where do we, let's uh, I'm gonna copy this into a different sheet so that we can mm, yeah let's move on from here. Okay so let's say we have our change in sales. Copy our data just down a notch. We have our y bar right here reconstruct that very quickly. That's our y bar and now we're going to want yi minus minus y bar. So we did this once before it's easy enough but now we're going to square this. y deviation squared is how I'm abbreviating this. This is the squared deviation from the mean And so we just take 10 squared, get 100, 13 squared is 169, 36, 4, and 225. When we add all these up, we get our total sum of squares. So that's our total sum of squares. Oops, it's easy. 534. Now, 534. Well, that's like saying we have 534 units of variation to try to explain. So when we go back here, in our example, we have SST equals 534 for now. So that's step one. We found the total sum of squares. Step two, can ask how much did we miss? So how much did we fail to explain? Another way of... Uh, Saying this is how much is how much variation is left um, after our regression, right? So let's see. We have here what we're going to call the sum of squares due to error. Sometimes called the SSE, and our SSE is going to be equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n of y i minus y hat i, the quantity squared. Now you'll notice that each of these is our residuals. Uh, each, you know, uh, and then this is a squared residual, so sometimes it's called the sum of squared residuals. Um, but we have our residuals up here, so I can just... Uh, Let's see. Actually, I'm going to want my y hat. So how about I just copy and paste both of these right down here. So we have our y hat and we have our residual. For to get the sum of squared residuals or the sum of squares due to error, 
SSE, we're going to take these residuals and square them. So this is the, remember, the residual is the amount of variation that's left. These are the squared residuals. And when we paste down, you can see that this is what we get left, right? These are our squared residuals. We take the sum. Here you can see it. That's just the sum formula copied and pasted. And this is our SSE. It should be 253.6 something. Uh, rounding error can get you here. So, you know, you don't have to be perfectly on the dot with these. Um, but it's going to get you on like the fifth or sixth significant digit, so it shouldn't be an issue generally. Let's see, this is going to be 253.61. And we'll make that reasonable. So in our example, we have SSE equals 253.611. Maybe going a little fast. Uh, let me just go back and explain where we get these again. So our total sum of squares we get, we take our y, um, and we subtract y bar in each case, right? So 29 minus 19 is 10. 32 minus 19 is 13. 13 minus 19 is negative 6. 17 minus 19 is negative 2. We do that all the way down to create this column right here. Then we square that and add all these up. If you add all these up, you get 534, and that is our total sum of squares. Now, in order to get our sum of squares due to error, we need to figure out what the difference is between our observed values of y and our predicted values of y, right? How far off are our predictions? And that's what the SSE tells you. It squares our error, right, our distance. Um, uh, and so that's this right here, right? So each of these is y i minus y hat i. It's our observed value of y minus our predicted value of y. We take each of these and we square it over here. We add all these up, we get our sum of squares due to error. And so we had 534 units to explain. We missed 253 units uh, that, that were there. That's how many we, we failed to explain that. So what did we, step three then, is well, what did we explain? Uh, well, that's going to be called our sum of squares due to regression. So step three, how much did we explain this is going to be quantified as our sum of squares due to regression and this is a measure of how far we did it's called SSR how well we did compared to just the very worst guess. So the very, uh, you know, not the very worst guess, but the, the, the least we can do is just take the average value of y, right? y bar, that's a decent guess for what the value of y is going to be. On average, you're going to be wrong as often as you're going to be right. Or no, you're going to be, you're always going to be wrong, but you're going to be at too low as often as you're too high. That said, you know, we have y hat. That was our prediction. Um, and if we take this distance and square it, for each one and add it up and that'll tell us essentially what we gained over just our baseline guess of y bar this is going to be our SSR and it's a measure of how much of the variation we explained by the regression basically how much how much benefit did we get from using X uh, as a as was there information there um, let me see. Let's calculate this. Okay. So what do we have here? Well, we're gonna we have our predicted values of y hat, and we have y bar. That's what we need, right? We need y hat minus y bar. Here's our y hat, and here's our y bar is 19, and you can see that we, you know, that there's something going on there gain some information. We're going to square that. We square these and then we'll sum them up. And you get our sum of squares due to regression of 280.
make this a little more legible. 280.389. And we can pop that back over on our workboard. So 280.389 is what we got. Saving this. Okay. So our SSR equals 280.389. That's our sum of squares due to regression. We have our sum of squares due to error, our total sum of squares. What we've done now is we've separated out the, the variation into a couple separate parts, right? Uh, and in general, this should be the case. You should be able to tell that our sum of squares total is equal to our sum of squares due to regression plus our sum of squares due to error. You add the t these two up and you get that one because this is the half we explained and this is the half we failed to explain. Uh, or portion, not necessarily. They're not always halves, right? Okay, so how much did we explain? Um, well, the way we, that we do, the way that we quantify how much we explained as a percentage of the total is with what's called the coefficient of determination also and much more commonly known as the R squared and the way to calculate R squared well there's two ways one is R squared equals SSR over SST and the other is because of this equation right here because this identity it's also 1 minus SSE over SST. So if you have either, you need the total sum of squares, but then if you have the sum of squares due to regression or the sum of squares due to error, you can calculate those. So what does it look like in our particular case? Well, if we go back up, you can see that the sum of squares due to regression was, uh, I just skipped it, 280.389. Uh, and our total sum of squares was 534. Well, 280.389 divided by 534. We can go back over here. We have our r squared equals this divided by this. Gives you 0 0.525. Another way of calculating it is 1 minus the sum of squares due to error. Oops, equals 1 minus the sum of squares due to error divided by the total sum of squares. And you can see that they're identical. 0 0.525. So how much of the vari variation did we explain? Well, we explained 52.5% of the variation. So half of the variation, or a little more than half, was due to, due to uh, our variation in options uh, as a percentage of a CEO's compensation. And the other half of the variation, or 46.5%, or 47.5%, was due to uh, something else, some other un unobserved, ran what we're going to assume is randomness. Um, now, this R squared is related to the correlation coefficient. So you, you learned about this before, R, X, Y. That's the correlation coefficient. Probably learned about this in stat. Um, but it's a measure of how closely related two things are. Um, for simple linear regression, uh, R squared is going to be equal to R, X, Y squared, which is why it's called R squared. Um, so if you already have the correlation coefficient, then you can figure out what the R squared would be. Alternatively, if you want to go from the R squared to RXY, you got to take the square root of both sides. Uh, um, but the sine is not going to be there. This can RXY can be positive or negative. So you take the sine of B, whatever your estimate of that is, and multiply that by the square root of R squared. So if you need to go from one direction or the other, that's how you do it between the R squared and the, the correlation coefficient. Okay, so that's how you figure out um, the coefficient of determination or the R squared. Uh, next, we're going to talk about um, our assumptions on the error term and how to test for, uh, for significance. So we'll be back soon. Bye.